and happy 2019. This is my first video in several months actually. Um, I had a pretty rough ending last year, but um, things are much better and I'm back to crafting. Uh, good to see you guys. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, today, obviously, you can see Sherlock. I'm going to start my Sherlock journal. Um, I was going to do it last year, but like I said, things got crazy and I just wasn't able to. So I'm going to attempt to work on it along with you. Now, there might be two, maybe three parts because I don't want a seven hour video just to do one journal, but I think it's really cool. And I got some things at a creative reuse store in Nashville when I went to visit um, our poodle mama, Stacy Evans, last year. And I was using that for, anyway, you'll see what I mean. But, uh, so let's get started. I'm going to set that aside. Now, what I did was, I had an old cracker box, okay? And I trimmed it to size. I have the start of four different signatures. Um, I had coffee dyed some paper. So, um, this is just to start. Obviously, they're not finished, okay? But I figured four when they're stacked would be a pretty good a pretty good size journal. Um, I got Graphic 45's uh, oh their collection what's it called um, Master Detective collection I'll be using that and some of their ephemera I also have some wallpaper samples that I got also from the Creative Reuse and I'll be using that. But some of the things that I got at the Creative Use that I'm using on this journal cover, which I'm going to start, and I honestly, I don't know what they're for. Okay, they look like sound soundproofing panels. All right, there's a bunch of different sizes, different colors. All right, you can see right here. Uh oh, there we go. I need to scroll out again. So let me scroll out some. Come on, there we go. All right, now what's cool is that, I don't know if you can tell, all right, but the edges are, let me see if you can, maybe, maybe on this end. They're beveled. Uh, there we go, come on. Anyway, they're beveled. Um, let's see it this way. Nope, anyway. Um, so I thought that would be cool for door panels. You know, and I went looking at, uh, you know, the front door of 221B Baker Street. Uh, I absolutely love Sherlock. And I did some measurements. What I did was um, I took a half inch in, except the bottom and the top, half inch in the middle, half inch on the outside edge, and between them. Okay, half inch. And I made panels. Then I cut one of these um, into the correct sizes. To and then the outside edge is going to be. I don't know. Can you see it? Maybe it's got that beveled edge. Can you see that outside in the top, outside in the bottom? All right. So I'm going, and I've already cut them. Now, you would think it'd be great to put, you know, the blue on the outside, which is actually the color I need, but the bevels aren't on this side, they're on the other side. So, well, well that'll just have to do. All right, I'm just going to gesso over the whole thing and then paint it. So, but I want to, all right, did I miss a spot? I think I got it stuck. There we go. All right. Or is this one empty? And I put the wrong one in. I was just using this silly thing. All right. Not funny. Not funny in the least bit. Okay, now let's try it. What in the holy theory farting buckets? 
this is not working. Okay, let me just get the other one because I'm not going to fart with this one. Because this one worked just a few minutes ago. Let's try this one. There we go. That one works just fine. Now, if you can't see it, okay, to help keep them even, I did take a pencil and lightly outline right here the edges so I knew how to line up the, uh, okay, this one's at the bottom, so we will go ahead and put this one on the bottom. Trying to keep the bevels on the outside. It's kind of hard to do on the top one, so, but that's okay. Actually, no, can't do it that way. Can't do it that way. But that's okay, as long as it's on the outside edge. The inside we can fidge, fudge with. Alrighty. And as long as that's on the outside, we can put that one right here. Alrighty, now push them down. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to scoop this just a little bit this away. There we go. That way I'm even. Okay, so that'll be the front door once it's dry. And then I'll have the 221 and then the little door knocker right there. Excuse me. Okay. Oops, that was kind of cockeyed. We don't want it to dry crooked. Outside edges beveled, that's fine. When they dry, I'll take my little exacto knife and I'll bevel the inside just a little bit. You know, just cut it at an angle, just a slight angle, just to edge off that sharp sharpness. So let me put these away. Alrighty. Yep. All right, and while that one dries, see that almost looks like Doctor Who's um, phone booth, right? That's going to be the next journal I think I make is a Doctor Who one. There's two of them that I like, and then there's one guy that just, oh, if he'd have never started it, and I don't remember the dude's name. Um... Yeah, I don't remember their names, but there's two guys that played Doctor Who, which I thought did a fabulous job. And then there's one guy, I think the latest one maybe, I don't know, I can't keep track of it. Uh, I haven't been to a Comic-Con in like freaking centuries, it feels like, but that's okay. Alrighty, uh, let's see what we've got. While that's drying, we're going to um, decorate the inside. Now, I went through uh, Pinterest and Google Images and all kinds of things. Yeah, I got these from Tuesday mornings. They're little tags and pockets and things like that. Well, not that one. That one's not. That's for masquerade. Let's set that one aside. That one doesn't go with this one. But for the, I've been collecting things for uh, several months. Um, yeah, I got getting paper pads and things like that. I believe this one I got from Tuesday morning as well. But it's got some interesting textures and stuff from that Victorian age, which I really like. But I was trying to find, which I believe I have... I think that 
is a great wallpaper pattern for the inside of the journal. But I've got some others. Okay, that one's set aside. But I've also, I ordered this. It's from William Morris. There we go, gift wrap paper. And the designs on the gift wrap paper, okay, this guy is a really famous um, high-end uh, designer. Um, he works a lot of, if, I, if I'm correct, he works mostly in the UK. Um, but these uh, wrapping designs are based on some of the designs he made for wallpaper. Okay. Uh, but I found this on eBay as I was having a really hard time finding, you know, old Victorian wallpaper styles. So I found that. I thought this was pretty cool. You know, just things that might work. And I found other little things. Okay. Some of my molds that I did with uh, clay. One with um, plaster or uh, silicone. That's the, that's the ticket. And then, let me see, I believe that's all. And then I've got one of these. So let's see what I put this in here for. Oh, these are um, the negatives from one of my die cuts, one of my fence die cuts that I thought might work as a backdrop. You see that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? But we'll see. Don't know. We'll just have to see. There we go. So let's see what we see while those are drying. Do I have anything in here? Okay, yep, Master Detective. Look at the inside of this, which I think is really cool. Um, they have templates and gift tags and stuff on the inside of the cover. This is the first time I've seen this. I'm sure Graphic 45 has done um, has done it in other, you know, paper paths. This is the first time I've seen it on the inside cover of um, one of these. Graphic 45 is my ultimate, ultimate favorite paper company, which obviously a lot of people are, you know, happy with that. So let's see. Nope, I don't want this one. That one's kind of cool. I'm looking for wallpapers right now. So, say not that one. Not that one. Some of this can be used for Halloween as well. See that? It's kind of cool. See, now that one looks nice. I like that one. And that's also a nice one. But I don't I think that's too much orange. That's a nice one. Okay, that's just some extra paper that I have that didn't come with the set. Now, see, I like that one as well. This one. This is from Bow Bunny's Back to Basics or Back to Backs. Um, which is a red and black, and then on the other side. So I like that one. This one is extra paper that I had from a different paper pack. Let's see, I kind of like both of those. This has got a more purple tint, and I don't know if you can see that as well. Here's a more of a red tint. I like that. This has got purples in it. But I think the pattern's too big on this one. Let's see, then there's this one. Eh. I love the Harlequin. I think the pattern's a little too plain. Let's see, there's this one, which is a nice one. And this one is a nice one. So, let me see. Okay. Let's 
focus on these. We'll pull this one, this one, this one, and this one out. All right. But we also have these to look at as well. Uh-oh. Well, that didn't work very well. We have smaller pieces. We have book pages I pulled out, vintage book pages. I've got some napkins that I thought would work really nicely. You know, just scraps and stuff from others. Aww. I got a text from my son. Hold on. That's so sweet. He says, hey, Mom, just wanted to say I love you. He moved to Texas last year. That started, I think, that started my downhill slope. And then everybody started dying. And it was just crazy last year. Um, I got to so I got to tell him hi. Hi. Come on. There, I love you too. I miss you so much. There. Okay. Never take your children for granted. Never, never, never. They may take you for granted, you know, as a parent. But hopefully when they grow up, they'll see that that was a mistake. And they shouldn't have done that. All righty. So we're not going to use these for now. I'm going to set this aside. I'm not going to use these for now, so we'll set these aside. What we want to determine. Ah, he says we miss you too. Okay, so what we want to determine. I like this one, but it's not long enough to cover the whole inside of this. I wonder if I can do use it to cover the back. But I don't know what colors I'm going to be doing here. I don't think this one will match. This one will, though, on the back. It will match with this. So we'll see. So we'll set this one aside for a minute so we can use it on the outside. I really like this for the inside. It's not quite long enough. You see that? Gives me just that. Oh, let me see. I don't know why. I don't think any of these are going to be long enough. They're not. So, the way to get around that without cutting it would be to center it in the middle. Okay? This is what I would do. There. The heck? Stop making noise. It's still making noise. Knock it off. Okay. I would center it. Let's do it this way so I can see better. Oh, where'd my pencil go? There it is. But I would also mark where the um, the folds are, what do you call that, duh, score, where the score marks are. So that way, uh, you're not tearing your paper. Let me see. I will tell you one thing, though. This that came with this EK tool scoring board, I do not like it because it rips through your paper so easy. And that is not a good thing. There's these fatter ones, you know, that you get. I believe this is a Martha Stewart. I'm not sure. Um, but just be careful. 
but it works so much better than um, than this one because this one it does I've ripped up more paper using this I should just throw it away but you know it just it looks pretty right there huh what do you say So this is going to go in, and this one's going to go in there. And you see how I did that? Because these are going to fold on the inside. That's how I left it like that. And that way when you glue it in, it'll also glue in better. Okay, more, it'll seat better. That's my opinion. Anyway. So, how was everybody's New Year's? Did you make any resolutions that you know you're not going to keep? Or did you actually make resolutions that you know you can keep? Alrighty. Let's see. I'm going to... I'm going to cut this, but I'm going to give it a little bit of extra, just in case. Because I'd rather have too much then not enough. Oh, gooey! Where'd it go? There it is. I don't know if you've watched any of my videos last year, but, um, you know, when you get re re um, replacement, that's the word, for your um, paper cutters, uh, the old ones that you want to replace, I keep and I put cardboard on mine. I write with a Sharpie. It says cardboard. That way, I can use... Aw, oh, phooey. Okay. I can use um, this and not mess up my sharper paper ones. Let's hope I don't have to... There we go. All right. I keep a little drawer with my sharp ones. Actually, this is in my, my carousel. So since I'm not doing cardboard, I'm going to pull this one off. Put the paper one in there. There. That way I get a smoother cut. And I can line it up with with the mark. And there we go. See, it's a smoother cut and I don't have to worry about all those little paper fuzz. All right. Um, yeah. So we will set this one aside. But I did square this end off, so I know this is my flat edge. All right. So I will butt it up against this one. Now I'm going to double whammy this because, I don't know, I, just, I don't trust glue and I don't trust tape. So if, you, if we put them together, maybe together they'll work, right? Uh, let's see. There we go. Something crashed. Oh, I know what that was. I'm just going to put one right across the middle. 
Now in the middle, or here, I'm going to do both edges. I'm going to put a little bit of tape on both sides of the fold. It gives it more strength. I started uh, reading again. Used to be my favorite pastime, that and writing. Well, we get so hooked up into this digital texting and computer thing that we forget how to use our imagination and just let go and unplug for a little while. And with all of the crap that was going on last year, I mean, we had, holy crap, let me see. My son moved out of state. He was the last of my children that moved away. I have no kids here in the state I'm living in. Um, and I lived for my children. Um, I have three grand, no, yeah, three grandchildren in state. That's it. And I only get to see two of them regularly. One I don't get to see very often at all. So my heart gets broken as far as, you know, just missing my babies. I want to do the front one first. And then we had four deaths in our family last year. Yes, four. We had two deaths. To my Two of my aunts died, my dad's sisters. And then in, uh, towards the end of the year, we had my grandfather died. And then four days after his funeral, my cousin died. And, um, wow, that just, that took me for a lot more than I could handle, to be honest. And I just couldn't handle it. So I kind of just checked out, you know, um, I wanted somebody else to think for me. I wanted to be left alone. I wanted to just veg. I needed time to get through my despair because it was pretty bad. And then, you know, one of my uh, one of my son's best friends um, uh, tried to hurt himself, tried to kill himself. So that it was just it was a really bad. Um, last half of 2018. I mean, I didn't even want to to go to church. It just really... I mean, you'd figure church would be the one place where you could get comfort and support. But I just... I mean, I wasn't angry at God or anything like that because honestly, all of my family are Christians and I know, you know, they went to heaven. So I know I'll see them again. You know, the Bible even says, you know, those who are believers, we don't mourn like the non-believers do because we have, we have hope. And... So that was, that was a little bit, but still, even with that hope, we can't help but grieve, you know, we're going to miss him, especially with my cousin, because he just, he's three days older than me. I'm 49. He's three days older than me. And he went to bed and didn't wake up. 
and that was very, very difficult for me. Yeah, that was really difficult for me. I was able to get over that hurdle. I mean, I didn't. I didn't make a video. I. I think I. The first crafting I did, and I can't believe it was a few months. I wanted to say two or three months. Was I finally sat down and tried to make some Christmas cards, and then they were very mild, very bland. I just. I got an idea in my head, and I just wanted to try it out. I got some new Winka Stella pens in, and uh, I felt I wanted to try and see with my embossing folders, see if I could do a little bit of this and that, and I did, but, and I did post it, but yeah, all of, all of my friends, my crafting friends, and my, my Facebook friends were very supportive, and I love you all. I promise, I really do, and I appreciate you so much. <sighs> because even though I wasn't there, you guys kept up with my Facebook group, which is Coffee Cup Crafts with Kelly. And you guys, you just really pulled through for me. And then your support of your support, your friendship, your words of encouragement. That was just, that was fabulous. Okay. So. I'm doing the tape and the glue just to give it more. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. Just to give it some more oomph. Now, I'm pulling this up to the paper. I'm not putting the paper down because for some reason when you do that, you end up with a little bitty gap and it never seems to seat right. So you pull the paper or the cover to it. That's what I'm doing. And that way when it opens, you're right on, right on target. And apparently, <laughs> I messed up somehow because I've got a trim on both sides. And I think it's because of the way I did the tape. That's why I did it that way, but that's okay. Okay, so that's the inside. That's what it looks like so far. I think that's pretty cool. There we go. Uh, do not cut paper. That was fabric. Well, let's just use these. And like I said, I'm just trimming. But I've been really wanting to do one of these for a while. Um... My daughter wants me to make her one, I said, that's uh, based on Doctor Who. Alrighty. And I will do that after I finish this. This one, like I said, will probably take maybe two, maybe three parts. 
Uh-oh, I need to get the charger for my battery. So give me one second. I shall be right back. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Ooh. Okay, day. Sorry about that. And I will put you right there. There we go. Okay. There's the inside, there's the outside. Okay, and I'll just put, you know, uh, I'll put something else there. Now, if you manage to get a glue smudge, I usually just take an eraser and erase it right off. That's the best way. You know, like, especially with the Tombow uh, glues, the green ones, I don't know how the blue ones work. I've never used them, but the ones in the green, uh, if you don't cover it up or, you know, if there's any leftover, it stays permanently sticky. It never seems to dry. So it's one of those repositionable ones. I believe that's how, that's what, that, that's what they call it. Okay, so this is the inside. This is the outside. Let me get rid of my trash. Here we go. Okay. For example, you know, to do the inside, whether this matches or not, it's just an example. See, it doesn't match, but, you know, something like that will cover up anything that you're short on. Now, if I wasn't doing a, a you know, an old Victorian slash Sherlock slash steampunky-ish type of a journal. I gotta close this blind a little bit because the sun is right in my face. Um, then I might use lace or something like that, but that would not work on this style. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's get some gesso out. This is white gesso. This is homemade. Um, there. Stacy Evans has a video on how to make your own. Um, I haven't used mine in a couple months because, like I said, I've been moving and everything. So it sets. It'll settle. See, you'll get it in clumps. But all you got to do is just mix it back up again. And you'll see I recycle a lot. I mean, that a lot of people do, and that's an awesome idea. You know, me, this is an Alfredo sauce jar. Um, I've got pots, clay pots that I don't use or that aren't being used, so I keep my glues upside down in them. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I just, I do. I make my own stuff. I make my own, uh, like, shelving units, drawer units, things like that. Yeah, see? All I gotta do is just mix it up. 
Now I put a little bit of wax paper on my in my lids. All it is is just taking a small piece, laying it over top, and then screwing the lid on. That way, if you've got a metal lid, it won't rust. Rusting is a pain in the butt. You know, you can rub Vaseline, but every so often you just got to keep putting the Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline. And uh, for me, eh, it's a pain in the butt. Let me go get some water. And I'm not going to bother with a jar. Give me just a second. Now when I make my water my my water thingy for my brushes and stuff I don't cuz they rinse out all the time. I just put a little bit of alcohol in it. Okay. Ready. Let me see what kind of brush do I want to use? I usually have a gesso brush, but I can't seem to find it, so it's probably one that fell out. Oh, there it is. It's my gesso and my glue brush. It's it's if I did if I'd have known, I would not have used this brush. But um, this is a brush just from Plaid. It's not one of my really really good ones, but this works. But I use the same one so I don't destroy a whole bunch of brushes. So. going to have to, I believe, because that is just too much space. I don't make a huge batch of gesso at a time because I don't use it as often. Okay, put that there. Where's the lid? Now I'm just covering this whole thing in the edges, in the corners, in the all over. Now trying to put my craft room back together and organize it in a better manner, um, I couldn't remember everything. You know, where did I have everything last time? What was easier? What would have worked better? That type of thing. So even though I've got a lot of this stuff done, um, I don't have it all done. Like right now, just while I'm doing this, I forgot. Wow, I keep baby wipes handy and I have not one close by. Now the reason I'm gessoing this is because uh, um, cardboard is very porous. So anything I want to do to it, it'll either soak up the glue. The reason I didn't gesso the inside because it already had a coating on it. because technically it was the outside of the book or the box. But this way, I'm also kind of sealing it. I'll probably have to make some more gesso because this one's kind of getting a little chunky and I don't know if that's from the gesso or from my paintbrush. It might be from, looks like it's from the gesso. But that's okay. Just when it dries, I can just pick it off. But 
making your homemade gesso is a lot easier and a lot more economical than buying it because honestly it's a pain in the butt and you can make your own with the same batch you can split it up and you can have black gesso you can have clear gesso and you can have white gesso all from the same batch and not have to buy three separate gessos there we go all righty ah Okay, let's see. Mm, crud, crud, crud. Okay, I missed a spot. Which, I also forgot my paper towels. So, at least they're close by. Whoops. I missed a spot inside the, you know, like in a crease. So I just want to make sure I get all of that right there. All right, now. Put that aside for just a minute and clean up our mess. Since I don't have my baby wipes, I'm just gonna use a wash or paper towel that I use in it and wipe up what I can. And I'll clean it up later. And there is a way to make your own baby wipes out of a roll of paper towels. You know, you get a roll, cut it in half, pull out the center um, cardboard tube. You stick it in a round Tupperware container with a lid and just, you know, rubber made, whatever, not Tupperware because you don't want to cut it. But then you cut a little X in the top of the rubber lid, feed it through. You've got glycerin, water, a little bit of baby shampoo, um, I think that that was it, but I don't know the, the measurements offhand. But yeah, you can make your own and it's probably a lot cheaper. At least it used to be. Now you can probably find baby wipes, you know, pretty fairly inexpensive, but Okay. I learned the hard way. Never leave your brushes sitting in water. So we're going to set this aside for now. Oops. Let's see. Is this dry yet? Not quite. Okay. I do want to check and make sure none got on this side. Nope. Okay. Oh, let's see. All right, I'm going to pause this for a minute so I can rinse out my water, dry this with my with my um, hot air gun, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I got out some colors to mix to make um, paint for the, for the door. Oh, I just need... Um, this is a Ranger. I think this is a number 10. I don't know all the terminology for, um, what do you call it? You know, paints and paintbrushes and things like that. But, uh, wipe this out. Now I'm going to mix a color that hopefully is close to this one which is the other side of these panels, which is the color I really liked. I just needed the beveled edge. So let's see what we got. We're going to use some navy blue. A 
this hasn't been opened yet, so I'm going to open this one. This is just Deco Arts regular acrylic paint in navy blue. squirt a little bit in there which is almost almost the color we need let me see we may not even have to mix no it's still a little too blue I want it more gray we're gonna end up with two different colors so let's do this we'll prime it with the navy blue So that way, um, when we put the final color on it, the white won't show through as much. Uh-oh, I just knocked something on the floor. Oh, well, it'll be there. A lot of people think to when you want to prime a wall, say you're going to paint it red, right? And then people will go through and they'll prime it white. Because that's what everybody used to do. But if you can, when you're like at your local home department store or your home improvement store, you know, like Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, you know, any of those, Ace Hardware. Uh, uh, you let them know, you know, you need a tinted primer and they'll tint it for you and then on that note it'll take you less coats to cover the original surface to begin with because you know you're not trying to cover so much white having the tinted primer is what um, helps So we'll just, we'll tint this, we'll prime this, we'll say we'll prime it blue. And that way the next color we use, won't we won't have to use so much. And what's kind of cool is that the streakiness on it, I'm hoping, will help it look like weathered paint. Um, this one will be for sale when I'm done with it. Just as a FYI. Oh, come on. I'm just, I got a little bit left. And that's all I need is just that little bit. See if I can make it work. Oh, really? Nope. It just so sucks. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a little bit uh, paint right there. There we go. Hopefully that'll be enough to fill this in. Okay, this is gonna have to move. 
because I do not like that ticking. That would drive me crazy. Er. Yes, I said er. Okay. I don't know. That blue kind of looks good, doesn't it? I may leave it that way. Mmm. Add a little bit of water to that so we can just wipe it out. Okay, now when I do stuff like this, I'll open it up. It's got blue on it. I'll set it aside and let it dry, and I'll keep using it. And then at the end, I'll have a really nice piece of, you know, art I can use on something else. Actually, that kind of looks really cool. So what I might do is I might take some black. and do some dry brushing. Just a little. Let me see if I can find a brush I can use that with. That, that's no good. That one's getting thrown out. That one's no good. That's getting thrown out. Maybe get the paper towel, fold it up, a little bit of black, wipe a lot of it off, and just around the edges. Um, I don't like that paintbrush, it's too big. We need a smaller one. That one's still too big. Come on. Well, this one might work. See, it's a little bitty one. It's called this. It's a scruffy. It's a quarter inch flat. Quarter inch flat. I like that. Now all I'm doing is giving shadow. I'm not really adding any color. This dry brush, but I'm trying to blend this out. There we go. used to get really freaked out about, you know, blending and stuff like that. I don't like that one either. It's not still too big. There we go. Because your eye sees one thing, right? It sees what your brain thinks it should see. Uh, I'm not sure the technical terminology behind all of that, but, you know, you see shadow and you automatically think, okay, I've got to put gray there or black there. Now, see, that's to me on this side, because I was doing it upside down for camera. I, I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue. Oops. Oops. 
Dang it. Now I'm doing a lot of oopses. You can tell I haven't cracked it in a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue and just kind of go over that, you know, just to kind of tame that back down a little. Now I'm adding a little bit more to cover up some of the lighter spots, but what I did was um, there's water on this brush and I didn't wipe it all out, you know, so even though um, it's still doing a sort of a wash. Okay, so you see, that's pretty much all I'm doing is just, you know, painting and, and shading. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a minute so I can finish shading, and then um, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. It's not quite dry, but I added some, I did some shading on the inside, you know, for the binding. So that's what the outside looks like so far. I may add a little bit more blue to this because I'm not it's a little it's a little light for me, but we'll see. But that's what I've got so far as the inside or the outside. There's the inside. Alrighty, now oh, where are we at? We're a little at about an hour. All right, so we did the cover, okay, we did the inside. I think that looks really cool right there with the panels, you know, um, lifted. I think I'm going to stop it for now and work on, uh, we'll work on part two uh, next time. But thank you so much for joining me. Um, excuse me. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. I hope your new year comes better than last year. Um, if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you want notifications of when I do videos, which I will be doing more of now, um, go ahead and click the little bell icon next to the subscribe, you know, little button. And, um... Remember, always, 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 always find the humor in life, okay? Because if you don't, life sucks. Trust me, been there, done that. Um, and on that note, I hope you will come back for part two and see what next happens with Sherlock, or at least the journal, okay? Um, have a great day, you guys. 
and God bless.